Mars, the fourth planet from the Sun in our planetary system, has been on Earth's wishlist for a long time. There's been a lot of romanticism around meeting life on Mars, and some more practical goals to colonize the planet. The truth is that Mars is not the most comfortable place for a human to live. It is downright deadly. No human can live on Mars at present without life support and bodysuits because the planet's atmosphere is just too thin, devoid of any covering like the ozone layer and lacking important things like oxygen. There is currently a lot of talk about how to fix this particular habitation problem, and we might just see headway in terraforming efforts. However, it looks like no one is considering the difficulty of actually getting to Mars. The rocket engines we currently use would take as much as 18 months to get there, and that's just a one-way trip. Anything from radiation poisoning to cancer could kill you on the way there, and would be no way to come back for an emergency. A return trip is currently impossible, so you're stuck there until you either run out of supplies or die of old age. Russia does seem to have a solution, however, it involves nuclear engines. We're going to be going over everything you need to know about this nuclear spacecraft, so before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe for more high quality content. Russia has been working on a reusable nuclear rocket since 2009. It is only officially announced to the public in 2016. This rocket is to reduce the Mars trip dramatically. It would take only a month and a half instead of a year and a half. Moscow's dream of a Mars colony will become more handily made into reality. The new rocket will be faster and this will be because the rocket engines would not be powered by carbon-based fuels like kerosene, and would also not need cleaning or any new parts to be able to come back to Earth. Vladimir Koshlakov, head of the Keldish Research Center in Moscow, said that the time it would take for a ship with this engine to turn around for a stopover on Mars would be 48 hours. This will be an important improvement to the current state of returning to Earth. It seems that Russia is openly competing with Elon Musk and SpaceX's progress in taking crewed ships to the Red Planet. Koshlakov said Elon Musk is using the existing tech developed a long time ago. He's a businessman. He took a solution that was already there and applied it successfully. Nikolai Sokov, a senior fellow at the James Martin Center for Non-Proliferation Studies in Montesi, California, said that the nuclear engine should not be so complicated to build. The really expensive thing will be designing a ship based around these things, he said. However, Russia may not be able to complete this project by their estimated goal of 2025. Even though they had completed ground tests in 2018, it would most likely be because of the country's financial situation more than anything else. While they accuse Musk of reusing existing technology, we've come to realize that the nuclear engine ideas were created by earlier space scientists in America and the Soviet Union. Soviet scientists technically created solutions to many of those Mars trip problems by 1967, when they began launching fission-powered satellites. Americans also had their own program called SNAP-10A, which was launched in 1965. They both ended their programs on this nuclear thermal propulsion a little too early, but the Soviets pushed it until the 1980s. The programs were stopped because those fission systems were better suited to relatively lightweight orbital satellites that didn't start being created until more recently. During the American early days, there was an experimental design of a rocket that would be propelled by it, setting off a series of nuclear explosions behind it. What Russia is proposing for their nuclear engines is not very clear yet. But it seems that there's a hint to thermal fission. What this implies is a similar entry to another early American design. That the engines would create heat by splitting atoms with the help of a small reactor, and this heat will burn some other chemical, usually hydrogen, but could also be methane in this case. This reaction to the rapid heating of the fuel would make the fuel expand and then generate thrust. America had actually created a project called Project Rover, to produce engines like this in 1955. The engines were referred to as Nuclear Thermal Rocket, and the project ran in Los Alamos in New Mexico, and actually produced a few engines. One called KIWI was actually there to show the design and concept of the Nuclear Thermal Rocket and how it would work. Another, Phobos, showed how the design would work in practice. The one that actually worked, called PeeWee, was actually to propel satellites into orbit. The project got scrapped in 1972 after the Apollo missions to the moon had run their path, and funding for space work reduced drastically. Around this time, the Soviets were developing a nuclear thermal rocket of their own, named the RD-0140. They'd started experimenting it in the 50s, but did not necessarily start any testing until after the Apollo missions in 1978. Their project was not on a large scale as Project Rover, but when it was scrapped due to financial turmoil, 
when the Soviet Union got hit by that in the 1990s, well, it collapsed a year later. Koshlikov's proposed rocket is a direct successor to one of these older engines, similar in many ways but with the advantage of years of research. In truth, the principle of thermal fission is not so far away from chemical propulsion. Chemical rockets, especially the faster ones, generate thrust by igniting one of the chemicals called oxidizer to burn the propellant. Scientists generally rate propulsion methods on something called a specific impulse. The question to answer is, for how many seconds would a pound of thrust be produced from a pound of fuel, no matter the kind? For example, one pound of the chemical mixture fueling the space launch system, NASA's rocket information stages, for the agency's planned mission to Mars, produces about 269 seconds of thrust in a vacuum. The problem with the chemical method, though, is that you would need more fuel for a faster rocket, and more fuel means a heavier rocket, which leads back to needing more fuel. This would lead to a thrust to weight plateau and the resulting 18 month Mars trip duration. Said fuel is really not cheap, it costs about $3,000 per pound. The thermal fission rockets would have at least double the chemical specific impulse, and this would make them able to carry more fuel in the spaceships and fire their thrusters for longer. That's why the spaceship would be able to enter the Mars orbit and even return to Earth. However, the fact that Russia might not be able to afford this venture, well, that's a problem. They had budgeted about $700 million for the project of the engines, and this doesn't include the cost of launching rockets. Even Koshlikov does not have much faith. In his remarks, he confirmed that the nuclear technology would not be used for the Soyuz 5 rocket, planned for completion in 2022, or even the Soyuz 5 super heavy rocket they're supposed to launch in 2028. Expenses aside, another issue was safety. In 1978, a nuclear-powered Soviet satellite crashed in northern Canada, scattering radioactive waste over an almost 50,000 square mile radius. A crash of a ship with the engine they are proposing would have adverse effects. If this does work out, Russia's efforts in decades past to establish communication with Mars or live there would finally be worth it. Since the revolution that crumbled the Soviet Union came and went, many in the country have focused on the Red Planet as some sort of exploration goal. Even before that, there was certainly a lot of Mars trial missions. As far back as the 1960s, a group of enthusiasts at OKB-1's Department 3 had already begun assembling a heavy piloted interplanetary spacecraft, the TMK. OKB was a top secret Soviet organization that superheaded missile development in the USSR. The TMK would carry a crew of three on a two to three year mission, including a Mars flyby and at 75 tons, 123 meters tall, and 19.6 meters in diameter, it certainly was sturdy enough. The spacecraft was to feature an instrument module, which would double as a radiation buffer for the crew and artificial gravity would be gained by the rotation of the vehicle. The livable sections of the craft had a diameter of 6 meters. In the event of a flyby expedition, unmanned probes, identified as N2, would be dropped off on the surface of the planet. Later on, OKB evolved into planning a landing of a piloted expedition on Mars, while conducting its internal studies of manned planetary exploration. The spacecraft carrying a crew of six and powered by electrical jet engines and nuclear power generators would be built in Earth's orbit out of the elements and launched by individual rockets. It would be something out of a science fiction book, delivering a train of five movable platforms. A recently discovered history of the OKB describes it better. One platform would carry the crew cabin with a manipulator and a device for drilling soil. The second platform would be a launch pad for a spacecraft capable of flying in the Martian atmosphere. Two more platforms would carry the main and backup return rockets, which would allow the crew to take off from Mars. Finally, the fifth platform would be equipped with a nuclear-powered generator, which would supply the expedition with energy. The train would travel across the Martian terrain for a year, collecting samples and relaying the data to the basecraft orbiting the Red Planet. At the end of the mission, the crew would take off from the surface to meet with the orbiting base ship for the return journey home. After Russia dumped the idea to focus on matching NASA's Apollo missions, RKK Energia came back to the Mars idea. RKK Energia wished to use its yet-to-be-tested N11M rocket launcher to assemble the nuclear-powered spacecraft in Earth's orbit. The vehicle would then push itself with an innovative electric reactive engines powered by a nuclear generator. The government was a little bit too troubled by the lunar program that made them lose to the USA to pay attention to any Mars proposals at that time. That didn't stop RKK Energia though. In 1986, it worked on the 1960s plan and added the experience already gained in long flights on the Salyut space station. 
to decide a dual reactor unit on the Mars spacecraft would push safety margins upward. In 1989, it evolved its plan into a three-stage one that would contain a slower building of hardware and experience for the Mars landing. Russia has come a long way since then. There is more research being carried out all the time, and more experience has been garnered. Would it be enough? Could they raise the funds needed to cut down the Mars trip time? We can only wait and see. Thank you for watching one of our videos, and while you're here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there.